Hey, welcome to this next video. We're going to talk about reproductive systems. Uh, hopefully you can generate a lot of questions. Post the questions into Edmodo. I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions. Okay, so I want to give you enough time so you can pause the video, take the notes onto your handout, and uh, still make sure you don't spend too much time on this. I know you have other homework to look at, but this will probably take less time than if we went through it in class. So here we go. Uh, reproductive systems. We have some diagrams hidden behind these leaves, but it's all biology, this is all science. So you need to be able to draw these diagrams, just simplified versions of the diagrams. If you would prefer to draw side view diagrams, we have those, I can give those out in class. But uh, it, the, what's important here is to understand how, how sperm cells and egg cells combine together to create new life. And this doesn't, it isn't just for humans, it's also for other types of organisms out there as well too. And we learned about the difference between sexual and asexual organisms as well too. So you can add a few labels here for your diagram, all right? The bladder is not typically part of the reproductive system, so I think it's just here in the diagram so you can understand how everything kind of fits together. The bladder is where urine is stored, so I wouldn't really include that when you have to list things in the reproductive system, but the bladder is there. Um, the ureter is going to be, it's a tube basically that's going to help transfer, transfer sperm cells, okay? Sperm cells are produced in the testis, uh, plural is testes, okay? You also might see the word testicles. The testes is plural when you're talking about one testis, it's a T-E-S-T-I-S, -S. sperm cells are made here. They get transferred and then that's how they leave the male body to go and try and look for an egg cell, okay? And this tube is called a ureter, ureter, okay? And then you have the penis as well, which is the exit point for the sperm cells and also how urine is going to leave the body, okay? If you have questions, please ask additional questions. Um, this is a man named Gabriel Fallopio, and he discovered this structure when he was dissecting human bodies, basically, dissecting human bodies. And so he gave this name to this tube right here, which is very important. We're going to study this in more detail. In class, we talked about, or we have, or we will be talking about eggs and how they're produced, how long they've been inside a woman's body, how many have been uh, there since um, women were very, very young as little babies, and how they're going to be moving through this tube here. So this tube is called the fallopian tube. If you write it like that, you have to capitalize with the F. It's also called the oviduct. Here we have an ovary. There are two ovaries. This is equivalent. These are called the gonads. Here's a special word called gonads. We learned some other special words. Remember gametes? Gametes are special. It's a special word representing sperm and egg cells. Gonads representing uh, testes and ovaries. Ovaries are like the equivalent thing of testes, and testes are the equivalent thing of ovaries. So testes produce sperm cells. Egg cells are made and stored in the ovary. Um, women have two. Men have two. We're going to talk about this in a little bit more detail later. The uterus, this is where the, the, once the egg and sperm cell find each other, this is where the baby would actually, oops, this is where the baby would actually implant. At that point, we don't call it a baby yet. It would be called, we'll go through this in more detail, it'll be called a zygote, then it'll turn into an embryo, and then a fetus, then when it's born, it's called a baby. And these are separate sections of the female body as well, too. I'm talking to my computer. <laughs> Here's a few diagrams for you to look at. I'm recording right now. Here's a few diagrams for you to look at. You can check this out. You'll get this handout in class. But if you go through, you might be able to figure out what's going on. We're talking about reproduction. So anything you want to contribute? You want to say hello? Hello. Thank you. All right. So check that out. See if you can answer some of these questions. Pause. But don't spend too long on it. Another question, why is sexual reproduction an advantage over asexual reproduction? Goodbye. You too. Just some students wanting to wish me a nice weekend. How nice. Very nice. 
try to think about an answer to this question. Uh, don't just go type this into an internet browser. You might not be prepared for the results that are coming out, and it might not be the quite uh, at the level that you're you're looking at. But try to think about this a little bit. Remember, sexual reproduction. Let's see. We said uh, maybe frogs do sexual reproduction, and you can list a bunch of others. Asexual reproduction, bacteria. Aphid. There's a whole bunch of other examples. See what you can find out. Why? Is this an advantage? Or why is this an advantage even? Okay? Think about that. See if you can come up with an answer. If you'd rather post an answer to this, go ahead. But if you see someone else has already posted an answer, go ahead and ask an additional question. Go through. What are we doing for time? Okay, looking at the diagram uh, at the bottom of your page, this is the female reproductive system up close. Uh, a few labels, you can see what's going on here. That's the oviduct or the fallopian tube. That's the uterus, okay? We'll talk about that in more detail. That's the ovary up close, and then they've kind of shown in this diagram what's inside the ovary. There are some eggs that are contained in there. There's an egg cell that's moving from the ovary, so it's going this direction. It's going into the fallopian tube, and when a man and woman are trying to have a baby, uh, Sperm cells will be deposited, and the sperm cells, if there is an egg there, then there's a possibility that sperm cells may meet the egg in order to produce a new living organism, okay? When they meet, and if it's successful, and you have the sperm cell and the egg cell combine, remember how many chromosomes that is? How many chromosomes here? How many chromosomes here? Okay, good. If it's successful, that's called fertilization right, uh, where the sperm meets the egg. And if that actually does happen, then you start with a zygote, and it turns into an embryo, and then the baby, uh, the embryo will implant in the wall here. And at this point, um, the woman would say she is pregnant, and she could find out by going to a doctor or by using a pregnancy test, and we'll talk about that a little bit later as well too. Some interesting stuff about the egg cell. Go check this out. Lots of cytoplasm. It is the biggest cell, right? You were asking why is the biggest cell? Lots of nutrients. We said food, but nutrients allows it to survive and divide sufficiently before implantation. This is a fancy word that means before it lands and makes home in the uterus. I said this in class, or you will learn about this. <coughs> Each ovary contains about 200,000 egg cells. And they've been there in the body uh, since girls were born. Okay, The uterus is the part that is shed when a woman has her period. We're going to talk about the menstrual cycle in more detail and why this is very, very important. And finally, the vagina is actually a, an acidic environment. And we talked about acids and alkalis. And we said that the skin, our skin pH, is something like 5.5. Okay. It's very similar, actually, when we're looking at this particular part of the woman's body and the purpose is to uh, kill some bacteria. A couple diagrams to look at up close. I'll go through this very quickly. You can pause the video. Here's an image showing fertilization. Sorry about these red arrow arrows. Sperm cells surrounding an egg. This is an artist diagram of what an ovum looks like on the inside of a fallopian tube. Oops. Ovary, this is what an ovary actually looks like under a microscope, okay? You can see there's lots of egg cells that are being developed here at different parts. The uterine wall, this is the wall of the uterus, so this section here, this section here is called the uterus, right? Uterine wall uh, actually looks like this, really, really amazing. And so you, if you were a new little egg that got implanted, you would be no bigger than this little, oops, the little circle that I was trying to make, a little circle that I'm trying to make right here, okay. Yeah. What sperm cells look like up close under a microscope. You can see their tails, how they're differentiated. The tails are there for a reason, you know why. And also another image of the oviduct. This is what the fallopian tube looks like, the wall of the fallopian tube under a microscope. This is an actual picture, an actual picture. Okay. Uh, that's it. That finishes up the first side of the reproduction handout. I'm sure you have many, many questions. 
take a look at the other questions that students are posting. Feel free to answer them as well, but everyone needs to post at least one question. We'll discuss more of this in class and be prepared to answer some questions. All right. Good job. Thank you.